While most update trailers we get for Nintendo's other big competitive titles, particularly Splatoon, are pretty straightforward and transparent, it seems like the ARMS team is trying to create this storm of speculation and wonder with every trailer they drop. I mean, the Max Brass info was pretty straightforward, but with Lola Pop, it seemed like they teased the idea for a couple of months before the release, with these super cryptic tweets and clips that sort of revealed something cool was coming without blatantly showcasing the new content. We just got a trailer for the upcoming patch 3.2, which seems to be following this very mysterious type of format. I've got info on this and some other big Switch stories of the week right here. Before I touch on the bigger stories of the week, I'd just like to make an announcement for anyone who might not have seen this yet. The fourth official Splatoon 2 Splatfest will be held this weekend starting Friday, October 13th with a spooky new theme. This Splatfest will bring back the age-old Twilight debate of werewolves versus vampires. I love wolves if you couldn't tell by the tattoo on my forearm, so I'll definitely be choosing werewolves. While most Splatfests for me seemed easy to call which one would be more popular, I think this particular event could be a very close call in the end, as I think many people hold both options in very high regard. Whether you'll be choosing Team Jacob or Team Edward, make sure you do so starting tomorrow so that you can be farming those ability chunks all week from your Splatfest tee. Another exciting bit of news we got this week was regarding Mario Odyssey. During E3, we found out what exactly the game's specific amiibo would unlock for you, and we've also known that every other amiibo would be compatible with the game, but this week we just got a few more details about this functionality. A recently released hardware chart on the official Japanese Nintendo website revealed that most characters from the Super Mario series will unlock special outfits for your character to wear, including Mario, Waluigi, Luigi, Diddy Kong, and even Gold Mario. The outfits will be unlocked automatically if you have the amiibo, but you'll still be able to find them in-game if you don't own any of them. Characters excluded from this list include Rosalina, Daisy, Donkey Kong, and even Yoshi, and it's still unsure whether these characters will have specific functionality that's different from all the other amiibo from unrelated series. Like I said though, literally every single amiibo ever released will be compatible with this game, even the turbocharged Donkey Kong from the Skylander series. It's currently speculated that you'll be able to get a hint for where a power moon is once a day from each amiibo, but nothing has been officially confirmed. Mario Odyssey is set to release in 19 days, so I'm sure we'll be getting more info on this in the next few weeks. Yay! And finally, I'm going to try to tame the big beast that is this ARMS 3.2 trailer. There were a few obvious things here, along with a few things that had me very confused, so I guess I'll just start out with the obvious things. First of all, they're adding a sort of achievement system into the game, along with an online emblem sort of thing like the Call of Duty call signs. You'll unlock these badges for completing different tasks. They showcased a few of these, like the Max Brass themed badge for completing Grand Prix for the first time, a Springman emblem for playing 50 rounds of Springman, and a general Biff badge for earning over a thousand arms points. You'll be able to look at all your achievements in the badge stash menu and switch between them fluidly. I don't know whether the game is going to track progress from playing prior to the update, but I really hope so because I've put quite a few hours into this game already. The badges are going to be displayed throughout party mode as well as on the verse screen right before a battle. This is probably something that should have been in the game from the start, but I'm still excited to see it come to fruition. The other sort of obvious piece of news is that the sparring ring stage is now going to be in the game as an official stage. Previously, you were only able to practice between games on the stage, but now it'll be in both the ranked and party playlists. This is kind of cool because it's actually the only stage with no special mechanics or gimmicks, so it'll sort of be like Smash's Final Destination stage in ARMS. And finally, by far the most cryptic piece of info provided in this trailer is in the last 10 seconds. We're shown a clip from the back and then from the front of what looks to be a Mecha Springman. It's the same Springman with his default toaster arms, but with metallic, robot-like skin. In the last second of the trailer, it shows the character floating into the air with glowing eyes and an almost headlock-like aura around him. The trailer doesn't explain this at all, so I'm going to have to do quite a bit of guessing here as well. Considering we've only gotten two, or maybe technically even one, brand new fighter since the game's release, I really don't think this is going to be a new playable character. 
If they are already starting to recycle their characters into new models four months down the line, I'm very concerned for the future of this game. My best guess is that they're going to modify the Grand Prix mode in some way. Like I said, it looks like the character has a very dark aura akin to the headlock boss character, so I'm sure it'll tie into that evil guy in some way. The story in ARMS is almost non-existent, but seeing as this is a major complaint about the game, and that the ARMS comics were recently announced, it would make sense for them to start to flesh out the story a little bit to keep fans interested. I really hope this is the case because this is still probably my favorite Switch game and I'd love to see them strengthen the weaker aspects of the game. The update is expected to release sometime this month, so watch out for that in the next couple weeks. And that's about all I can really say about this trailer. It was super cryptic, but to be honest, I kind of prefer it that way. The lead up to Lola Pop made it a lot more exciting when she was actually released, and I'm glad to see the ARMS team is continuing with this slow, mysterious rollout formula. Let me know if you've heard anything about this puzzling new update down in the comments, leave a like on the video if you enjoyed, and subscribe to my channel for the latest Switch content available. This is Max from Max Culture, and thank you for watching.